In this movie, we're going to show how to do a 12-inch checker piece. And uh, there's a number of ways you could do this, but uh, we're going to do just a checker piece with a little bit of a crown in the middle and then maybe some beveled edges around the outer perimeter of the part. So uh, right now I've got a plate here defined as a 4x8 sheet. Sometimes it's helpful to define your plate as the same size as, as a part you're going to create so that you can use the snap around the plate function, the control and the number function as a design aid. The well, next thing we need to do here is if we're going to do a checker piece, that's a round part. So we're going to go to the draw menu and go to circle. Uh, we could just kind of draw a part and resize it. Or we can go to a specific part size here. And uh, with a radius of 6 inches, we're going to get a 12 inch diameter part. And here we'll do the snapping into the middle of the plate there. Now if we think about a uh, checker, we're probably going to have an inline here. So I'm going to go to the uh, offset tool. I'm going to do a single inline and we're going to use a one inch thickness here and we can see a little green line here. It's going to preview the part. I'm going to hit apply that will create that geometry. Now I'm going to uh, need to create a crown here. So um, I'm going to start off by drawing just a, a rectangular shape here. It's going to be about the size of my crown. All right, now uh, we'll use some of the distortion tools here. Let's go to the distortion tools here, and we're going to use Taper Distort. I'm going to hold down here and just pull that out just a little bit and hit Enter, and that just kind of widens the top as compared to the base. Uh, now let's come here, and, and I'm actually going to take this one, and I'm going to go to the Cut by Line tool, Endpoint Snap, and I'm just going to cut this contour at these these little corners here. There's always lots of ways to do something and there's more than one way you could think of for this particular part but here I'm just gonna uh, come and still with my snap to point uh, snap to uh, endpoint check I'm gonna come here and and draw one inside line and then one additional contour now I'm gonna transform this and explode it because I want to grab just this one and I'm gonna mirror this part and we'll hit the right orientation here at the bottom for this graphic. Make the one to go on the other side of it. And we're going to make a copy. So I just made a little copy there. Now I'll select both of these. That was a mirror copy. Now I'm going to come here and go to um, copy by, by rows and columns here. And let's see if I want to do a little extra column. I think that looks good. Uh, now I can hit... I want to do one few more over here. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five of these lower parts. So let's keep it like that. I just applied it. Now I'm actually going to make a copy of this as well on the other side. So I'm going to go back to the mirror tool and and then mirror, rotate, or any of these. You can make a copy as you're doing it. So that just makes it easy to to copy something as you're creating the design. Now let's take all these and let's merge this back together and do a single contour. Now we're going to take this other part, and all the while I had this merge to endpoint checked, which kind of helped with that a little bit. Excuse me now. Actually, you know, if I wanted to, I can come in here and I can take this line and make a little bit of an indentation there, kind of a little bit different, a uh, little bit different kind of a, of an of a slant there. Now I'll take this part again. I can use this copy, this mirror copy by line, and I'm going to use uh, the center point snap this time, just to help me create a create that same part on both sides there. So here we've got, uh, we've got a little bit of detail work done. Now I think I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to come up here and draw a little. Let me turn off my snap for a minute. Draw a little side rectangle. And uh, let's select our big one first. Then the second one, and we'll do a weld subtract. And now we've got a little little checkerboard crown there that we're going to center just by hitting Control and Five. So here's our crown shape. Um, here's our our inner border. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 3D crown. So I'm going to take this and copy it. And let's go here and create a new layer. I just went to my layer tab, create a new layer. And that's going to allow me to 
to paste and have the same exact contour in a, in a, in a work area where it's in the same place it is as this layer, but now I can do different things to this one and, and just have it be in the same place. The reason why I did that is because I need to use this contour uh, to be part of the area I'm going to cut down to make my, my checkerboard piece here. So uh, I'm going to come, this is a, a 0.75, I'm going to leave a quarter inch in the middle. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, I'm going to do an island fill. Here I have a pre-saved tool path, which you always want to save the things you use a lot and, and make it easier to reuse them. So I'm going to say island fill and 0.25 is going to be my depth here on this one. And uh, I have my feeds and speeds already here because I used this previous strategy. And now I see that I'm able to cut and get down into these areas at a 0.25 depth. All right, now I'm going to come here to this layer, and I'm going to just come over here and draw this little sweep section. Let me one, go over this one more time. I'm going to go to Draw Arc. I'm going to click over here to the to the right, and I'm going to hold down my Shift key and drag out to the zero the zero position or the east. Then I'm going to drag it up to the top of North, and by doing that, I create that little sweep section there of a 90 degree sweep section of an arc. Now I hit F2 to bring up Precision Input Center, and let's just make this 0.125 in height there. Oops, looks like I forgot to say uh, proportional. 0.125, apply. There we go. So now we have this part, and this is actually kind of small here. Maybe let's go to 0.25, create a little bit bigger shape. Now I'm going to select my, my crown here. And I'm going to say to en route to make a 3D surface inside of this, this contours. And we're going to make it a flat profile. We're going to add to the relief 150 DPI and hit apply. So that means we've now created a 3D surface just inside the area where we need it. Now I'm going to do a chamfer here. And uh, all the uh, surface capabilities are here where you can use the toolbar button. So here we'll come and say chamfer. The little wizard says to, sh to select the chamfer and contour, which is right here. I'm going to hit my green check mark. And we can see we've created this little uh, shape just by going around the outside of the crown with this little profile. And uh, 0.25, it's just a little bit little bit thicker than that, ma that material I cleared out there. So I'm going to come here. We can actually be pretty precise on this with precision input center. And let's scale this to 0.2. All right, so we've scaled it down a little bit. Now let's move it, now that I have this front highlighted, to minus 0.02. Just put it a little bit below the surface there. And now I've, I've got my 3D part just where I need it. So here's my, my 2D part. Now let's select the crown. Let's go here. And now I have another uh, save strategy here. This is for a relief quarter inch ball nose tool. I'm only going to go to a depth of 0.22 here. All right, I have uh, apply overcut checked and I'm going to put in a small overcut value. That just means that I'm going to exceed the boundary here of the shape with my 3D tool path by just a small amount. And uh, I have a 90% overlap to get a good detail. And uh, here we have our, our feed rates as well. So when I hit OK here, I'm actually going to incorporate a 3D toolpath right along here at the same time. Now I'm assuming you might be making both sides of this part, so uh, that's why I did a 0.25 depth here. If we cut it, if we flipped it over and did a 0.25 depth, that would leave a quarter inch in the middle of the part. All right. So now we have our our two layers shown together. We'll show us our 3D part in the middle of the 2D background. Now we have to create. A, uh, a series of, of lines around the outside to create a nice little uh, beveled uh, edge look for stacking the parts. And we're going to do this by creating a, a line that's one inch long. So I just drew a line from my draw line tool and I'm going to come here and resize it afterwards. Okay, now I'm going to select my, my line. I just drew it along the x-axis as a flat horizontal line. Let's go to draw, multi-copy. This time I'm going to multi-copy around a path. And that's going to be my path. So 
let's see here. Let's actually come here. That one's a, the contour is being used. So let's go to this path then. So we're going to come here and do this again. Multi-copy. This is the part I want to multi-copy. Uh, this is going to be my path. And we're going to go to the inside of it instead of the outside. Now I could come in and I can, I can control this. If I want to, I want to have really stackable parts then I might need to do a little math and, and do a few more of these. We're kind of doing this more for looks than, than to make accurate checker pieces and, and it probably will look a little bit better not to have as, as many of those little parts as you might need, but, but you can just have as many as you want just by coming in here. If we wanted to have 80, we could type in 80 here. Um, it really doesn't matter on that front. Uh, so uh, we'll just go ahead. Let's just leave this at 80. And we're going to hit apply. Now I'm going to come here and kind of go through and select all these without encompassing anything except for those, those parts. If you don't completely encompass something, you won't select it. All right. Now, actually, I'd have something to decide here. Um, Right now, these are all going in the same direction. And if I really want to be as efficient as possible as the toolpath, I'll probably select every other one of these here. And I'm just going to group these every once in a while as I'm going along. Make sure I don't accidentally mess this up and you really can't mess it up it's just I'm going to take a few extra moments here to make sure that when I cut this it just takes a little less time a little less direction time and I think the one or two minutes this will take would make it worthwhile So now I've got every other one selected and I'm going to go to transform reverse open contour. So I just kind of went through there and made it so that each one of those lines is going in a slightly different direction. All right. Now I've got all those selected and I'm going to group them just to make them easier for me to, to select here. Now I'm going to do an engrave here. I'm going to choose a 90 degree V bit. And we're going to go to a depth of 0.125 inches. That means the spacing is also going to be that the amount of material that's taken up is 0.125 as well, because the depth equals the um, the width here with a 90 degree tool. And we have our feed rates here as well. And so now we'll apply this. If we hit F9, we can see all those little cuts there, and the the green dots here rep represent the start point. So now we've got everything on screen. Um, now one last toolpath I would put here is a, a toolpath to cut this out. So I would come here and say uh, whether I'm going to use a, a quarter inch end mill since I'm already using it there. I can do this. Or if you want to use a, 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 wide, a different tool we can. But I would just come here and apply the cutout toolpath here. Actually let me just make sure I went 0.76 just slightly through the material. So there would be my cutout toolpath. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make a copy of this, control C. I'm going to paste this to my active layer. I'm going to delete this toolpath and turn on all the layers, but I still have that geometry selected. And that way when I come here and I do a simulation, I'm going to tell it to use selected contour to mask. I have that there. Uh, actually, let's just do this one just to see if red will show up. Black wouldn't show up quite as well. You know, black will show up fine. So let's say we're going to make a black checker piece here. We're going to set our colors to black. All right. Now, we're going to order this, and we're going to go by uh, the type of toolpath. So we're going to do our island fill first, then the engrave, and then the cutout. The second order is the tool order, so we're going to do 
decide here whether or not we want to do the 3D first or the 2D first. I'm going to do my 2D end mill cut first, then the 3D ball nose, then the V-bit. So that's the order we're going to take here. We're going to highlight this so we can see it. And then we're going to go to the first tool lift here. Let's see. Yeah. We go all the way through. I don't really see my light shining on there. There we go. Now it's doing the 3D part of that file. Now it's doing the cut around the perimeter. And so this would be our our file. You know, it's just turning out to be a little bit hard to see with the black. So let's come back here again. Let's just use the default relief color. Alright, this will allow us to see it a little bit better. So Here's our first tool change, and we'll just go ahead and go to the, all the way to the change. You can see this is just doing a 2D pocket from that inner border to the crown. Next tool change is going to be the ball nose tool, and we can see it's just going to cover that whole crown there. And give us our little 3D graphic in the middle. The next tool change is the back and forth doing the cutting around the edge of the part. And then the last tool path, of course, is going to cut it out. So that's how we, uh, we did a little simulation of a 3D checker piece here. And you could do this a number of different ways. You could create the little waves in the middle if you want instead of this part. There's a, there's a number of ways you could do that, but this is a pretty simple way to, to use as a practice and get started.